Hello everybody. I wanted to go uh, shoot one last short expose on uh, this is going to be a basic PPP or point to point protocol. Um, and point to point protocol pretty much being meaning that you're going to have a point to point, which means two hosts on a network or a dot two fifty two subnet mask. So you have only two available hosts on the network. So um, now one of the things that is nice about the lab is that they give you the script to the lab so that you don't have to spend you know 20 minutes IP addressing and other things so the drawback to that is is this if you have a situation where you let's say for instance you have the wrong um, port plugged into the device in, in the logical diagram here that's the only time that you would ever have a problem with the script not working for you but the majority of the time the scripts are pretty straightforward so like what I do is I copy them into a notepad and then what I'll do is I'll go to the top here and I've got uh, I've got the diagram in front of me on my other monitor and R1 is this guy right here so what I'll do is I'll copy and paste down to right here. I'll do a copy. I'll click on this guy, drag him over, go to the command line, hit no because I don't want to enter, enter configuration dialog, which is basically a command line wizard. Sets up the username, and password, um, IP address for you to remote in. If you never dealt with a Cisco device before, you're going to want to go through that and at least get the initial configuration set up and save it. And then uh, go back through it. It gets you probably, I don't know, 60, 70 percent of the way through, but the drawback to it is there's no way for you to get granular with your configuration. If you want to set up ACLs and routing in a specific way or policy routing, it doesn't do any of that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump into global config mode and I'm just going to click paste because that'll paste in the, um, the configuration. Now the configuration is in it's I should be able to hit enter and then there it goes it's uh, do a show run to verify and passwords in there I know the password to Cisco come through and uh, so on and so forth now notice how right here it says zero fast uh, ethernet zero slash one I plugged into see it's uh, too close Zero slash zero. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you don't plug it into the right port, it's not going to work. So what I'll do is, you should be able to click here and plug it into fast zero slash one. Now it'll come up. Now that is the nice thing about it. So everything's already running. That doesn't do anything for me. Um, I'm more of a actually type the stuff in and watch things come to life. That's where I I enjoy watching stuff come up. You know when you so like I do a show IP route and do a show IP route and there should there's nothing in here for config so it only partly worked now it's um, that is a drawback for me because the way that the script looked like it was gonna run it was gonna be a full script but that's okay what we're gonna do is we're going to go to R2 which is right here and we're going to highlight this and drag it down to about there copy and then we're going to come up here to this guy now I have to be careful when I'm doing this no enter enter and I have to be kind of careful because um, the way that this script is set up is it's supposed to set up um, uh, where I have it set up like this where I have actually a four router network. They want you to configure a loopback on this guy to simulate another network. But I have a router. Why would I need to set up another thing? So right here, this is R2. This guy right here is this guy. So I can actually set up a route and can uh, route it out there and then do a ping and then do a trace route. And then if I want to do, do a policy route. Uh, that's where policy routing would come in. But, um, 
in this case they have a loop back to where on the loop back you can have a hundred loop backs a loop back just um, simulates a um, another network if you don't have a router and then the nice thing about it is too if you don't have another router what you can do is you can um, uh, you can go on to any interface of the router turn the keep alive off so like I can go to config T and then go interfa interface fast zero slash zero and do no keep oh, it's gonna let me do that oh, yeah it doesn't have that option here but if you're on a real de real device you well because this one here it gives you the option for it um, if you do a type of no keep alive keep alive takes the um, uh, sends a pulse every I guess it would be the best way to say it is it sends a layer two pulse across the uh, across the wire and says comes back and it will be it'll tell you whether or not there's connectivity on the other end it's almost like doing a, um, a cable test it says is there something there yep something there yep something there yep and then when it says nope it's gone and then that's when you see line up line up protocol down where it would keep alive off the uh, protocol goes up because it doesn't know any better. So that's when you're able to simulate if you have a, a real router and you don't have anything to plug into it, you turn do no keep alive, it brings it up and you're able to apply an IP address, ping and set up routes to it and it'll route, stuff like that. So it's a very, um, uh, it gives you some uh, flexibility when you're, when you're actually doing your, um, uh, your configuration. Um, which is good for training and stuff like that and um, so this actually I don't know if this guy if I could do a route map um, if a route map is optional yeah I don't see route maps I wouldn't be able to do any policy routing um, I see it's got some basic let me do a policy map where um, like if I went in to do some QoS alright uh, where is it? Policy map right here. Configure policy map. Um, policy map is when you do any type of QoS for like queuing or um, class based way to fair queuing, um, anything like that. So if I was to do um, policy map question mark um, and type would be are we going to do an inspect, which is a C back, which is um, uh, class based actor class base access control I think something like that and you do an inspect and what that does is you're able to um, inspect packets coming and going based on um, the, their application type so you can say your SQL server has um, more priority over your uh, web traffic and stuff like that so but I'm not going to get into policy maps right now because I'd, I'd rather get this done. So um, the uh, the nice thing about this is you're able to get kind of granular with some stuff. So um, I'm looking at the the configuration here, and I'm just going to slap in some config to get this thing up and running, and go from there. So um, if I'm going to be quiet, you're just going to watch for a couple minutes while I get this up and running, and and you should run. Um, fads that's set up. I will talk a little bit so you guys won't be like, what's he talking about? See, this is where you got to be kind of careful because it's already got PAP. Um, but I forget what PAP stands for. Um, it's authentication protocol. Authentication is different from encryption. Um, encryption actually conceals what's going out, going across the wire. So that would be your WPA, wireless protected authentication. Wire, uh, wired equivalency protocol um, that's where encryption comes in where you can't see if you were to put a sniffer like here or here you'd actually what's actually going across the wire wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see it or authentication and to, unless you have um, a password set uh, on both sides and they're both are the same in, in, in encapsulation where authentication Authentication it. Um, if you can't provide a username and password, then you won't be able to make a connection on both sides. That's what authentication means. So, like when you, 
let's say you're a remote access user and you're trying to get to this network right here so you you're here you log in maybe through a VPN or um, you do a remote desktop connection well in order for you to, to do the remote desktop you need to authenticate yourself through a VPN connection and a VPN a virtual private network um, what that does is it gives you the ability to say okay I am who I say I am you VPN to this router and then this router has an access to this router so you're able to authenticate to this guy and then you're able to remote desktop to maybe this guy just the theory more theory based than anything else but um, so let's so you gotta be careful when you're dealing with this so you have to make sure if you have R2 is the username and Cisco is the password so um, basic basic configuration as it sits so I'm gonna actually um, 00 this is the IP address 1011 so I'm assuming this is gonna be 1012 up here so I'm gonna do an enable config T and do go actually I'm gonna turn this on so I can see what I'm doing drag this back over here go interface zero 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 uh, what is that one P address there and that came up um, so you should be able to do a do ping give it a second for it to ARP because what it, when you're when you're doing it when you're doing a ping is your uh, let's see that's I bet you any money it's on the wrong interface no oh wrong encapsulation by default this is HDLC so if you do a do show interface zero 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 plus one right here it's in the wrong encapsulation it's HDLC which is high level data link con connection basically that's um, it's an open standard it's developed it's um, industry wide you can do it um, well actually I, I take that back you can't do it industry wide what you can do is HDLC is the default encapsulation on Cisco devices so that is the uh, best way to put it and that's the actual way it's set now when you um, let me do this real quick uh, it's not going to let it um, you won't get a uh, it'll it'll show it's up you know it's um, it's well it, it will, it's not up up it's just there's mm, it's connected so it's on the same subnet basically so what you gotta do is you, you gotta go in here and cap PPP. That's it. Now I'll do a do the scan, and now it's um, that's weird. Anyway, and uh, ping ten dot one dot one dot one. It should work this time because I have the encapsulation set the same. At least I should. Why is it not coming up? So interface zero 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 zero. P P P. Oh, that's because I am an authenticated. That's why. Um, now, when you see all this stuff right here, um, I'm not sure what that one is. Bridge C P. All the C P stands for is control protocol. I P C P is Internet Protocol Control Protocol. It allows you to connect. Um, uh, um, layer 3 connectivity CCCP I don't know what that one is CDPCP allows you to run Cisco Discovery Protocol across the line um, so what I'm going to actually do is VT I'm on router I'm on this guy I need to go to this guy go config T. I, I was wondering why is it not working I just realized interface 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, uh, PPP authentication 
pap and then now there's actually two you can do you can do pap or chap uh, chap is better um, enter you're gonna do um, what's the command again I got I can't remember the command off the top of my head um, I really wish I could do uh, okay let me do this router zero and compare pair notes here real quick and do PPP pap uh, see this is where the question mark comes in sent username and then we're gonna do r2 pass 0 Cisco there so now I don't know if it's gonna jump up and say hey I'm over here but we're gonna do ping 10.1.1.1.1 so it should come up now that we've authenticated I can see they're talking to each other they're pinging kinda I don't know what's up with that. And let's just do a debug PPP um, authentication. Deb That's failed. This is what happens when you run debugs. You gotta be careful with them because this will easily overload any um, unauthenticated user. So we're gonna do a you all. See now it's not long. Okay, so if you, what I would recommend doing is typing you all, which is undebug all. Do that, and then so you have it situated. So now you're gonna do a debug PPP packet. It's not telling me anything. Tell me authentication failed. So let me let me zoom through this real quick and see what the, down here at the bottom what they got going on. Why is uh, actually let me pull this up and go full screen. You guys are only going to be able to see part of the screen. And I understand that. Um, R one and I've got. Minimize that. Let's go. There. Have it stop freaking out. So, um, let's do this. It's easier to compare it side by side. So, we're going to go R1 is right here, R2 is right here. So, What are they? Oh, I see. R. I gotcha. I see. I see. I see. I see what they did. That's just simply not me not looking far enough ahead. Now, see, on R. Oh, okay. See, they had username R2 and R3. That's why. See, if you don't. That's. I never. I don't use point to point. Um, whenever I do consults, it's typically just a static route. Um, and if I do anything, it's frame relay, and it usually it's EIGRP um, or OSPF. Typically, over frame relay, it's going to be EIGRP. EIGRP works a whole lot smoother than OSPF does. OSPF is kind of hinky, um, and actually, a lot of places are going to um, MPLS. So typically, I'll um, if I I'll talk to the ISP when I'm setting somebody up and be like, are you guys running MPLS? Yes. Um, and it's like, okay, well, I can either, I'll talk to their engineer and I'll be like, okay, do I, do you want me to configure MPLS on my edge device um, or my edge interface? Typically a T1 or maybe a, a T3 connection coming in. And they're like, you can, or you can just send it to us via IP and then um, their routers will pick up and take the IP and they'll put the MPLS packet ahead of it so that when it goes through their network it's MPLS across their network and not IP but 
So that's the thing about, uh, um, yeah, let me scroll down to R2. And let me just throw the config into R2 real quick, because then that'll eliminate all of my um, my issues. Hopefully, why I'm not now it's gonna it's gonna yell at me a little bit here, which is okay. Enter, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for R3 and get that up and running. Because rather than sit here and explain to you why something is not working, I'll just set it up to where it is working. This is R3. No, now let me do, I'll jump in here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Host name of the router. R3. Um, what do you want the enable secret to be? Uh, we're going to type in Cisco. What do you want the enable password to be? Cisco. One. Now, the, the reason I typed in two different passwords is really simple. Enable secret, if you have that typed in, is this. If you type in enable password and type this in, Okay, um, and then you go back and you try and you just like, oh, I forgot the the enable secret password, and you think you, you can just get in using the enable password, which is clear text. This one's encrypted, see, it becomes encrypted. This one is clear text. The enable password is used when you do not specify an enable secret password, with some older software versions and um, some boot images. Now. Um, the uh, password becomes encrypted in configuration. This password, after entered, becomes encrypted in the configuration. If you forget this password, okay, and then you figure you're going to be able to get into that password, it's not going to work. This one trumps it, okay? So we're going to type in Cisco as well. Um, no. So. Enter interface name used to connect to the management network from the above interface summary. How do you want to connect to the network remotely? VLAN 1, serial, fast 1, fast 0. We're going to hit control C to break out of that. That's not what I want to deal with. Enable config T. I'm going to type in paste. Enter. So, <clears throat> that being said, we should be able to um, show run I should be able to ping it may work or it may not it wants to and I've got clocking set so I bet you any money is a show run is going to be our problem in here Let's see here. Under PPP, R2 on R. R. This guy is R2. This guy is R1. R2. See, that's the thing about encrypting. I never, ever, ever recommend putting encryption on at the same time you are configuring things, simply for the fact that this is why you don't do it. And now I'm troubleshooting a, a, an authentication issue before I even get the ability to ping between neighbors. So we're going we're gonna to go into interface 0, 0, 0, 0, um, 1 and go and type in no PPP authentication. No or uh, no PP PAP uh, sent username. So now and we should do a show run. That should should go away and it did. At least um, oh you know I did on the wrong interface. That's okay though. So I'm gonna do config t. I'm gonna go interface serial zero slash zero slash zero. And I'm going to type in uh, no P PPP authentication, no PPP PAP Oop. sent user. That takes care of that. Now, this guy, I'm going to do the same thing too. The reason I'm doing this, like I said, is because of the fact that I have 
you you don't want you want to get full IP reachability before you start adding in authentication, encryption, anything like that because a situation can pop up like this where you're starting basic configuration trying to get at least reachability up and then you end up you're like, well why isn't it working? And then you're you know you got either somebody on the phone or you're like I don't know, and you spend 25 30 minutes maybe hour call somebody and just a mess. So I never recommend putting authentication in unless you already have reachability. Um, so we're gonna do um, interface is zero 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 zero. We're gonna do no. Putting no in front of anything it negates and no PPP. Sent, or no, pap, sent. So I think that just, okay, yeah, I brought it up. That's what I was looking for. So technically, I should be able to ping 10.1.1.2. Destination host unreachable. That's weird. Hmm. That's just. So IP interface brief. Yeah, it's ten one one one. This one shows up and show IP interface brief. This one shows up as well. Oh, I see. I got to shut off. That's why. Serial. Hold on a second. Um. I got the wrong. See, that's another one where I have the wrong interfaces configured. I have zero. This one's right here. That's zero zero one, and this is zero 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 right here. This is zero one zero. So, even though I was technically wrong, um, I was just on the wrong interfaces. So, I'm gonna go to global config and type in interface serial zero slash zero slash one. No, or, uh, shut. I'll turn it off so that I don't have to worry about IP address. Conflicts or anything like that popping up. I'll go interface 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Type in IP address. And then I'll type in 10.1.1. Get the mouse in the way. 2. And then I'll be no shut. So now it's changed up. Do ping 10.1.1.1. And there it goes. That's what I was waiting for. And then OSPF came right up too because I've already got configuration. OSPF is nice. Open shortest path first. Um, I will. It'll probably be a little bit before I start talking about that on a, on a larger scale. I'll talk more about that when I do GNS3 stuff. Um, but like I said, this is. Uh, if you've got to be really careful when you're setting up um, labs because in a situation like this I spent 15 minutes just troubleshooting a simple issue that I should have caught in the beginning but um, such is life you take one for the take one on the chin and keep right on going zero 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 oh, that's it right there IP address I should, should already be the same IP on there um, type copy isn't that will give me the option of paste and 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 252 no shut there and That's because there's no, um, this guy's not turned on yet. Show IP interface brief. Yeah, I don't have the uh, serial interface in here configured yet. That's why it's down. And it's administratively down, so I'll jump in to config mode. And I'll type in uh, interface serial zero. Uh, IP address is going to be 
that brings that up and if I do ping 10.2.2.1 it should come up that's connected but it's dying oh authentication on that's why duh Oh, and it's, yeah, maybe it's the wrong encapsulation too. And uh, show interface serial. HDLC, that's why. Wrong encapsulation type. There it goes. And type in do ping. There it goes. At least I have reachability now. That is the first thing you always do and then you can and then it OSPF clicks in right behind it and it's good to go so um, from here we're going to type in interface fast 0 slash 0 did I give yeah it does 30.1 copy that um, actually, I want to go into one, type, type shut, and then go back into here and type an IP address, paste it. I mean, you don't have to turn it off, but um, there, that brings that up. So then this, this section will come up, and then what I'll do here is I'll exit out once and I'll type in no loop zero. No interface loop zero. Oh, wrong wrong router. It'd be on this guy. Config T. No interface loop zero. There brings that down. So now I, because I have a uh, a route set up over here on a slash twenty seven, even though it doesn't really need it. Um, let's see. We're gonna go config t into interface zero zero slash one slash zero IP addresses two oh nine dot one six five dot two hundred dot two twenty four we're gonna actually gonna go two twenty five and then two five five dot two five five dot two five five anybody know what a slash twenty seven is off the top of their heads anybody thank you for anybody that answered now we are on the clocking side, I think. No, we are not. Do no shut. Now it brings it to down. So we're going to minimize this guy, bring this guy up, slide it all the way across. Command line, no, we don't want to enter. And enable config T, interface, was it zero, zero slash zero? We're going to type in IP address is. Um, 209.165.200.226.255.255.255.224. No shut. Clock rate. It's 64,000. Now it brings its stress. As soon as you put a clock on there, it automatically comes right up. So I do ping. 209.165.200.225 comes across. Now we have reachability at the most basic point. And then um, if you decide to put routing on, so you type in um, exit and type in router OSPF 1 network 209.165.200.225. Two twenty four, and then you type in zero dot zero dot zero dot thirty one, because it's a thirty two mask, and hit enter. Oh, sorry, area zero. I don't. It's not going to come. Oh, it will, because it's okay. Cool. I wasn't sure if it was going to do it, because I wasn't sure. It's not going to load on both sides unless both routers are running the same protocol, right here. So you have to be kind of careful with that. And and then show IP route. So now you have routes to your to your routers. Now assuming this guy's got um, an IP address on it, which it doesn't, which you can't ping something unless it has an IP address to it. 
type in 192.168.10.10 and then 192.168.10.1 and then we come over here and then same thing with this guy this guy is a dot .30 so 192.168.30.1 or 10 and then 192.168.30.1 from here, you should be able to ping 192.168.10.10. Give it a second for it to ARP. And there it goes. Show that again. Now, if you watch, watch all of these. Right here, and all the green lights on all these interfaces. I'm going to do it one more time. They all flash because they have a consistent connection. So I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Do 30. And then... Uh, enter. Do it again. Enter. Now you can do a ping. Actually, let's do this, and then let's give me. No, it doesn't give me the option. If you're on a real router, you can do a, a size. You can do a large packet ping to test, you know, vulnerability. Like um, in GNS3, I'll go over this, where you can go in and you can. Um, configure it to where your size is like a thousand bytes. This is a hundred bytes. You can do like a, a ten thousand byte ping for and repeat it five thousand times. And you want to test the test the circuit's size. And by doing that, you can do kind of a stress test on it. So like if you're testing for failover, you can do a large packet ping. So like on a serial interface. If you want to do a ping size of say, let's say it's 64,000 is the size on here, and you want to set it up and fail over to where if it reaches a certain threshold that you um, uh, that you you put a threshold in there, and as soon as your bandwidth approaches or reaches that that threshold, it will automatically fail over to a faster link, or it'll um, maybe you have frame relay traffic shaping to where your um, this guy right here is a uh, 256k link. This guy's a T1. So if this guy sends a two, T1 across here, as soon as this guy reaches um, receives information at 256k, what it'll do is in um, frame relay it'll send a beckon, which is a backwards uh, backwards congestion backwards something congestion notification to the the sending device and it'll say hey, hey you need to slow down so it'll say okay and then it'll slow down until it off what to slow down to and then it'll so it'll only send it um, out this way it'll only send out at a certain speed so that's the basic concept is the shit traffic shaping it's need, you need to configure that stuff on the interface that you want it to to be on because it's it's actually when it's coming in it's pleasing and when it's leaving it's shaping. So you want to shape this down to say 256k if it goes to a certain IP address or a certain interface. So if it's to a certain IP address, it knows that if it goes out this rate, then it's going to narrow it down. So basically, it's taking a um, like a filter and your um, it's like a funnel. You put you have so much space at the top and only a little bit at the bottom. Well, it's the same concept. You're trying to shove uh, two megabits per second out this little point. It's got to slow down to 256k. So that'll be its shaping limit out the interface, and you can place it inbound at 256k. So that's that's the concept. But it doesn't give you the option of um, of doing anything with pings in that regard. So, but I'm going to save this right now. To where it's at. This is 251. That's the um, go in here. Um, we're gonna type in uh, two dash five dash one. Type in WAN so that I can tell the difference. Click OK. Now at least I have reachability. So then when I come in here tomorrow and finish up. I still have uh, no. Um, I still have mm, 
excuse me, different IP addresses to throw on here. And it looks like it's the same config where you've got to break some stuff because what it wants you to do is this. It wants you to come in here, test connectivity, enable OSPF, verify it full network See, that's the thing what it should have done is um, verify the uh, full network, full IP reachability, then configure PPP, then verify it, then you want to um, choose a way to break PPP encapsulation, whether it's you turn the interface off, you throw HDLC on encapsulation on it, or whatever else. There's only two WAN connections you can do, HDLC and PPP. It's whatever else you run across that you can um, run with, whether it's uh, um, frame relay or ATM and PLS. That's the actual transport method to get to the ISP. So you only have two encapsulation types. You have PPP or HDLC. So then you can configure authentication. And then turn it off, turn it back on, do some debugs. That's, bas that's basically what this one is. This one's going to be kind of tricky to, um, to do because of the fact of what it is. And then this will be the T-shoot, I bet you. Yep. She gives you um, the issue and you got to figure out where it's broke. This is this is good though because then it gives you some real life, like okay, is this right? Well, off the top of my head, I can't tell because I haven't. I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, but that's the basic concept to the to the labs is to test your understanding of the technology. Because really, when you go take the CCNA exam, they're going to test you on some stuff, and if you don't know what to look for. Um, and you choose the wrong answer, that could be the make or break. You know, each test is 150 bucks, so you got to be kind of, you know, you, you got to be, um, uh, you got to make sure you know your stuff. You know, and I'm gonna go take the CCNA probably another couple of weeks, another few weeks, maybe a month from now, as soon as I get my financial aid, and then uh, uh, I've just, I ordered a book for 15 bucks for the CCNA practice questions. It's got like 320 questions in it, and uh, the point of the book is to um, actually while I'm sitting here, I'm gonna go config T interface zero 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 and cap. It give oh it does give you a few different options: encapsulation, frame relay, HDLC, and PPP. HDLC is Cisco proprietary. Well, I shouldn't say it's proprietary; it's the default. Which means as soon as you turn it on, that's what it, that's what it's going to come up at. PPP is what you can change it to if you have a point-to-point -point connection. If you are running a, um, if, the, if this guy, if you, if, um, this guy right here, if you had a single interface and this interface was going to run to several other uh, other individual interfaces, you'd have to run a point-to-multi-point, uh, -point, and point-to-point's not going to do that. So. Pull to point to multi point is perfect for this, but like if you're gonna do frame relay, which I'm sure they're gonna pull that up sooner or later in one of these. And there it is. Well, that's a basic. That's pretty simple. Um, frame switch. Frame relay is really really simple. Once you get the configuration down, it's um, it's a shared bandwidth cloud, so. The idea of um, uh, the idea of frame relay is you're using a permanent virtual circuit, which right here is the cloud. So your your frame switch is the ISP, and you have a DELC here and a DELC here. Now the way that they have this set up is kind of stupid, um, just from the initial looks of it. Because it's saying Delsi 201 to Delsi 102, unless this is supposed to be a back to back frame relay. But I don't know how the config looks. Let me see if I can scroll down real quick and see the config, how she has it, how they have it set up, because that'll tell you everything right there. Oh, they're going to, oh, it's point to point. That's why. That's why they can do that. Um, it, and that's what they call back to back frame relay. When you have a point to point connection, meaning, um, Logically, it's going to work 
page 23. Logically, it's going to work this way, where you're going to have these two connecting to each other, but you're going to have a frame switch in the middle to the ISP. Is actually how it's going to work. Um, but in this case, you're going to have um, it's going to be like this, and you're going to tell it which DLC. It's going to be frame relay um, on a point-to-point -point basis. So basically, instead of putting point-to-point -point protocol in there, you're going to put each uh, frame relay in there, and you're going to say um, the next hop is going to be this DLC, and that's how you're going to get there. So, and I'll explain how that works. I'll shoot a video for that too, so you guys can figure that out. And, and I'll explain the technology because if you don't have at least a basic understanding of why it is the way it is, you're going to be like clueless when you come to the exam. Be like, why would you choose frame relay this way or point to point for this? These are your options. And if you don't know what to, what the under the the concept behind the technology is, you're going to be screwed. So. But that's, that's pretty much it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.